Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're so excited to have everybody with us today. As you join, we would love to see if you could put in the chat where you will be studying abroad. Love to see where everybody is going to go. Oh, we have one person going to South Korea, two people going to South Korea, Japan. If you're just joining us, we'd love to see where you're going to be studying this semester. If you could put it in the chat, might find some other folks that are going to the same place. Great. Somebody going to Austria. Ireland, Italy. Montana, Georgia, Buenos Aires, Greece, England, awesome, France, Japan, Minnesota, another person going to South Korea, another person going to Japan, awesome, that's great. If you're just joining us, we're going to get started in just one minute, but we would love to see where you're going to be spending your time abroad. If you want to put it in the chat, we'd love to see. Somebody going to the Netherlands, great. What a good variety here. Somebody going to Montana, Maryland, Scotland, Austria. Awesome. Welcome everybody. We're just giving it another minute as lots of folks are still joining the session. If you've just joined us and haven't had a chance yet to put where you're going to be studying abroad in the chat, you could do that. We would love to see where you're going to be going. Cool. Well, somebody going to France, England, Chile, Ghana, South Korea. Awesome. Netherlands. Great. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Rachel Gordon. I'm our Director of Enrollment Management and Program Operations here at ISEP Study Abroad. Um, I'm so excited to have you all join today's panel. Um, before we introduce our panelists, I'm going to um, let my two colleagues, uh, I'll be working today with our two Jackies. I'm going to let my two Jackie colleagues introduce themselves. Um, Jackie D, do you want to start? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jackie D'Amico. Some of you have gotten emails from me, um, but it's nice to be here, and I hope you all have a good experience. Um, for those that don't know me, um, I am the SSO for the United States and Canada. Um, so, yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Jackie Langdon. I'm a marketing manager at ISEP. So I oversee things like our social media accounts, um, which is a good time to plug that if you're not already following us on Instagram and TikTok at ISEP Study Abroad, it's a great time to do so. It's a great uh, platform to learn about the different student experiences available through ISEP. Uh, and speaking of, I'm so excited to hear about the, our student experiences from our panelists today. Yeah. So before we hear um, more about our panelists and their experiences, we want to start by hearing more about you all. So we're going to launch a little poll really quickly and see how many of you have already completed your ISEP acceptance packet. Hey. Wow, awesome. So it looks like we've got 75% of you have already completed your ISEP acceptance package. That's awesome. So we'll be quite brief then in our next little piece here. If you've not yet completed your ISEP acceptance package, um, you can find it in the acceptance package tab of your ISEP dashboard. You have three weeks to complete it from the time that you receive it. Um, and it has four main sections, maybe three, depending on the settings of your university or which program you're going on. But they are 
a student contract, which we'll talk about in a second, a medical form, a program deposit if you're going on ISEP Direct, or an acceptance fee if you're going on ISEP Exchange. And those may or may not be in your acceptance package, if depending on your home university settings. And then if you're going on ISEP Direct, you would also need to enroll in ISEP Insurance as part of your acceptance package. So really quickly, um, the, um, the student contract has three pieces to it. One is your program information. That's gonna have lots of critical details about your program start and end dates, your housing benefits, um, any meal benefits that you have, what types of services they'll have at the host site, right? Do you need to bring your own bedding? Will they provide bedding? All of that kind of important stuff. It's gonna have a contract of participation and then a part for you to sign. So really important that you read through that carefully, review those details, it has a ton of critical information, and then sign off on that. So the next part of the acceptance package is no matter what program you're going on, whether it be direct or exchange, um, we ask that you complete a medical form. Um, it's just making note of any medical um, history or any medical needs that you may need an accommodation for while on program. Um, we would like to know it, but again, um, it's at your discretion. Um, next would be the acceptance payment. So for those that are going on an ISEP exchange program, you will have the acceptance um, payment in your acceptance package. Um, please remember your acceptance will only be processed once you have completed the acceptance payment and that's located in your invoices tab. For those that are going on an ISEP direct program, you will have um, your program deposit. Um, so this will also be in um, your invoices tab. And again, your acceptance won't be processed until um, you have completed your program deposit. Um, lastly, everyone needs to enroll in the ISEP um, health and safety program. So for direct students, um, you will do this in your acceptance package. So you must enroll before you are considered acceptance. And again, it's in your acceptance package as one of the tabs. Um, for exchange students, um, you will enroll and pay for your ISEP health and safety program after you are accepted. So after you have completed your acceptance package. And that will be located in, um, for ISEP exchange students, that will be located in your health, um, health insurance tab. And I will pass it over to Jackie. Hello again. I already gave a brief introduction, but a little bit more of my background is that um, I studied at the University of Kansas and I studied abroad on an ISEP program at the Universidad de Costa Rica. Um, absolutely loved it. And again, I'm very much looking forward to hearing about um, other ISEP student experiences um, from all of our panelists today. So we're going to go ahead and get started with introductions. I would love to hear from each of our panelists um, where you're from, where you're studying abroad, and what you're studying. So we'll go in order for this one. So Luciano. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Thank you, Isaac, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Um, well, as you might see, my name is Luciano. I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. Um, and I am here in Emporia State University, Kansas City, uh, Kansas State, sorry, um, this, semester, this uh, spring semester. And yeah, I hear about the possibility to do an exchange program last year. So I get uh, interest and, and investigate a lot of it. And I found out that there was an, uh, a space available for the exchange this semester. So I was really happy when, when I found out that. And yeah, so far here, the, the experience is really good. Uh, everything is so, I am glad of, of everything. And I am joining every moment of it. Um, I don't know what more to say, but yeah, I am really happy. And yeah, it's the first time I have an experience like this. So I am getting really, uh, really big of, of every, uh, important moment I live here. Awesome, thank you. Uh, we're gonna pass it on over to Vanessa. We're 
we're ha it looks like you're unmuted, but I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Um, oh, now sorry. I can. Now I can. Some thanks, Vanessa. It's a little bit, I will say it's a little bit hard to hear you. So I may uh, suggest like uh, inputting maybe to different headphones or like, I'm not sure if it's like coming through the computer or what, but um, while, you know, maybe you take a moment to figure that out, we'll go ahead um, and talk next to Kayla. Hi, um, my name is Kayla. I'm from uh, UMBC, which is in Maryland in the United States. I saw someone put in the chat that they're going to Maryland. So if you want to reach out to me, definitely do that. Um, but I'm studying abroad in Thampeda, Finland. Um, I study math and economics, um, but while I'm here, I'm also studying education. Um, and I've been here since January. I got here January 2nd um, and I get home June 2nd. So I'm right about a little bit past uh, halfway of my exchange. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Eva? Um, can you hear the speed train? The yes, I can hear. Just started I can, going off oh, I can't hear the speed train. I thought you asked if I can hear you. I can hear you well. Can you hear the speed train right now? Oh no. Only when you're not talking, actually. Okay, For well, me. I'll just talk fast, I guess. Um, But I'm Eva, I'm from the States. I'm from Wisconsin, but I go to school in North Carolina. Um, and I'm studying anthropology and business, um, which I am studying both of those things here in Malta as well. Um, and if you've never heard of Malta, it's a really small island um, south of Sicily, um, so in the Mediterranean. Um, and yeah, I'm also an ICEP um, digital ambassador while I'm here. Um, so you can see my post as well if you follow the ICEP Instagram page. Um, and I am having an amazing time out here so far. I'm excited to share more. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least, Landon. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm Landon. I'm from the States as well. I'm born and raised in Virginia, and I went to Virginia Tech. Um, still enrolled there, but I'm actually a second semester senior right now. So I was late to the party, um, and I ended up in Prague. And just I'm so glad I finally got around to doing a study abroad program. It was something I always thought about um, and just finally pulled the trigger. And it's been an incredible experience um, taking classes and experiences and experience. Um, just wow. life and just life here and everything there is to see over here. I've been to a bunch of other cities and uh, countries in Europe. So if any of y'all have questions about any places um, I may have been to, um, yeah, I'd love to love to answer any questions y'all have. It's just been a great time. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for your introductions. Um, we can go ahead and get started with the first of our questions. Um, I would love to hear from each of you what your arrival experience was like um, coming to your host country. So why don't we go ahead and start off this one with Eva. Sure. So um, my semester actually didn't start here until mid-February. Um, so I had a, kind of a nice long winter break, which was really nice. Um, but so I got here mid-February and the housing, oh my goodness, um, the like housing accommodation that I'm, uh, that was arranged um, through ISEP um, sent someone to pick me up at the airport, which was really, really nice. I didn't have to worry about anything um, like, any transport there. Um, and I actually didn't have class, my classes didn't start for about a week. Um, so I had a full week to just kind of explore and get situated. Um, I figured out like my SIM card and all of that stuff. Um, and we did have um, an orientation 
um, kind of in the middle of that first week um, where I got to meet a lot of other um, students who are doing like ex the exchange programs as well. Um, got to meet some of the local students. We got a tour of the university. Um, they helped us with any other questions we were having about like just adjusting here. Um, and yeah, we got kind of all situated for classes to start. Um, so it was kind of a hectic like first week, but it was really amazing um, to be greeted by people and have people um, kind of help guide us the first week, a uh, week or so here. Yeah, that's awesome to have that extra time and also for like little things like adjusting to the time difference and, and stuff like that. So great. Uh, how about we move over to Kayla? Uh, yeah, so the way they have it set up in, I think all of Finland, but definitely at Tampere, um, is they kind of do like student tutor groups. Um, so there was about 10 exchange students and we had uh, three local students who were like our tutors. Um, and they actually um, like reached out to us before we came in December and um, we could arrange with them for them to pick up some stuff for us. Like I arrived late at night. So the office that has the keys or the, the sorry, pardon, um, the apartment office was closed at that point because it was like 830 at night. Um, so they had been like able to go earlier and pick up my keys for me. Um, and we also had these like kits that we could rent, um, that have like bedding and kitchen, um, supplies. Um, so they were also able to get that for me before I came because they kind of warned us, like they run out really fast and there's a lot of exchange students. So, you know, you can ask your tutor to grab them for you. Um, so my tutor met me at the train station with my keys and with the two kits, um, and helped me get back to my apartment. Um, kind of got me settled in, helped me figure out the finished locks, make sure I can get in and out of my room. Um, and then similarly to uh, Eva, we had like a week until classes started um, and we had a bunch of like welcome events. Um, they had a tour of Tampere for us. So we got to see the city. Um, we got to meet a bunch of other exchange students. Um, so yeah, that was my kind of welcoming process. Awesome. How about Luciano? Yeah, I have a similar experience when I came here. Uh, the first week was about uh, orientation week in which we meet uh, other people from exchange programs. It was really good. As long as I remember, there was no moment where I feel like lost or, or nothing like that because they... Uh, the people who are always helping and getting to know the place and, and everything. So it was really good. We also have a WhatsApp group, so which uh, we uh, talk there. If we have any questions regarding the the campus or how the things work here. So it was really helpful, everything. Really, really good. Oh, that's great. Uh, how about Landon? Yeah, um, no complaints here either. Um, I arrived a couple days before I could actually move into my apartment just to explore the city um, before classes started. But I had very clear instructions from ISCP on where and when to go when it was time to move in and everything. Um, and it went super smoothly. The uh, apartment management and staff were super accommodating and friendly and helpful with getting moved in and everything. Um, and yeah, it was great. Um, the cross Atlantic flight was a little tiring, but after I got over the jet lag, it was smooth sailing after that. Awesome, thank you. And uh, how about Vanessa? Okay, um, sorry, is my audio okay now? Yes, it sounds, yeah, much, it better. sounds much better. Okay, um... Sorry, uh, so what was the question? I just missed it. Um, oh, we would love to hear what your arrival experience was like. Right. Um, okay, so I actually arrived in Montana a couple of days um, before um, classes started. And um, I, I flew into Missoula Airport. And um, I actually have family there, so they came to get me, and um, I spent a couple of days with them, and uh, we actually went to 
um, buy things that I needed for my room. And uh, I guess I was pretty prepared because I just did a bit of research um, on the things that I needed for the room, like a mattress. I mean, sorry, not a mattress, but like the mattress covers and uh, just some other room items. And then um, they drove me down to Bozeman, three hours away from Missoula uh, on a Sunday. And then classes, sorry, not classes, but we had our international student orientation on a Tuesday. And um, basically they just gave us a run through of what the international office does for the international students. And also what um, the university, Montana State University um, does, the services they offer. And, and um, yeah, just uh, basically like, a, like an information session which is pretty um, helpful. And then Wednesday classes um, started. Um, and then so far, yeah, so think, uh, things have been good. Um, my student housing and classes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, so I would love to move over a little bit more to academics. Oh, do we have a question, Rachel? I'm sorry. We have a ton of questions already. Okay, go that. ahead. I think we're gonna start in on the question. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. Um, so one question is, what's something that you didn't expect or something that you wish you knew before studying abroad? Either one, it can, we can open this up to everybody, anybody who has an answer. Either something you didn't expect or something you wish you knew. Maybe I, I wish uh, I knew before how here the people uh, manage their times because it's really different comparing to Argentina, the work times, the the times, uh, also the dinner. Uh, I didn't uh, get used to it yet, to the time they they used to, to eat, uh, the meals and everything. Uh, at five is when they had the dinner, so I, I am getting used to it right now. But yes, about that, uh, the different in, in, in times, I, that was the big, the big thing, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, a lot of students deal with that. Different, different cultures have different times for everything. I yeah. Think. yeah. Yeah, I can kind of speak on that too, because I'm from the States. I never ate dinner at 5 p.m. I usually eat dinner at like 7, 7.30. 5 was a little bit early for me too. Um, but I live in housing with a bunch of exchange students, which is something that I wasn't expecting. I didn't think that there were going to be this many other exchange students here um, as there are. A lot of them are from Europe. And so they also eat dinner a little bit later. Um, and so I've kind of had to adjust when I use like the common kitchens, because from like seven to eight, eight thirty, like you're not really getting into that kitchen. Um, so I either have to eat dinner early, which I usually don't, or like I have to eat dinner super late now to like accommodate the fact that there's people here eating dinner later too. So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, one thing for me that I didn't expect um, kind of has to do with academics actually. Like I don't have really like any assignments throughout the whole semester. Um, obviously there's some like readings and stuff um, like to come to class prepared, but it's just like a final exam or like a final essay um, and you don't really have to do that much in between besides like show up to class, obviously, um, which I'm not really used to at home. We have, you know, like weekly assignments for every class and all of that stuff. So it was definitely an adjustment there. Yeah, we hear that a lot from students, especially students going from the United States to European countries that in Europe, you know, you, you're unlikely to have anything that's graded besides a final exam. And that's a big adjustment. Yeah, I can yeah. speak to this, um, a little bit too, coming from the States and going to Prague. Um, we do have a few homework assignments here and there, um, but it is mostly tests and papers. Um, but the biggest adjustment was um, all my classes meet only once a week and they're three hours long, um, which I was kind of nervous about, but honestly, I've grown to really like it. Um, you sort of just lock in for that class once a week um, and it gives really more time to explore and do other um, extracurriculars that are so fun to do when you're abroad and trying to experience as much as you can. So um, something I've gotten used to and going to like a lot. Awesome. 
Okay, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. Um, this is a pretty common one that we get. Everybody's always one of everybody's main concerns when they first go abroad is what am I gonna do about a cell phone? How do I get my cell phone to work? Um, and people have that concern in all different countries. Um, do you each wanna tell a little bit about how you got a cell phone in your host country? Yeah, um, so I got mine set up through AT&T. Um, it's on a plan where it's $10 a day for every time I use international service, but only up to $100. Um, and I try not to use it as much as possible. When I first got here and I felt like I was adjusting and getting the lay of the land, I used it a lot more. But the more I've been here and, um, you know, learned when I can just not be on my phone, learn the city a lot better, um, I've been able to stay off it more and save some money. Um, so that's a good option. But I've also heard SIM cards are a great way to go, um, although I didn't do that. A lot of my friends did, and they like that a lot, too. Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. Um. So, I also got a SIM from uh, with AT and T, uh, which was quite a simple process. I mean, you only needed five dollars to activate the SIM, and then I bought um. So the data plan that I normally buy, it's a monthly plan, and it's about forty, thirty five. Um. It's $35 for 5GB, which I'm sure is not a lot of data. I mean, for a student. I mean, uh, it's just for me when I go off campus, when I need to like use it. Um, but when I'm on campus, I, I'm i normally using the school's Wi-Fi and it's just a big help. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I also, I have an eSIM um, and I, I did one of these um, like panel live sessions before I came here um, and asked someone um, about what like eSIM um, companies they recommended. Um, so the one I'm using here is called My Melita um, and they have like a student plan. It's only like 16 euros a month and it's like unlimited data um, while I'm in Malta. And then it um, gives me a certain amount per month, like if I go travel the rest of Europe. So it's a really amazing deal. Um, and the eSIMs are super, super easy. Um, so I definitely recommend um, looking into some of those options as well in host countries. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. So you don't have to deal with unlocking your phone and getting it swapped out. Yeah, and also I want to add that uh, in my personal opinion, there are, uh, as Landon say, there are many uh, mobile companies that uh, offers free trials, uh, maybe one week, but is enough time to to use it and prepare for, I don't know, just to use it. There are plenty of, of them I use. Awesome, great. Okay, um, the next question is, are any of you staying with a host family? I don't believe any of you are. Are any of you staying with a host family? No, okay. Um, well, for anybody who has questions on host family, you can contact your student services officer and they can put you in touch with somebody who is staying with a host family. So you can ask those questions there. Um, in terms of classes, um, the big question we get all the time is, how do the classes compare to your classes at home? And how long did it take you to get adjusted? Um, I can go. So kind of similar to Ava and Landon, there's a lot less classes um, in the state or here than there are in the states. Um, so that definitely took some getting used to, especially in terms of grading, um, where like usually we have grades for participation and homework and things like that. And then the kind of like three exams that make up 30 percent, whereas here, um, like the most I had was like well, I had one class that had some homework assignments, but for the most part, um, it is very much so like just an exam or just a project at the end or a paper or whatever. Um, so that was definitely something to get used to. Um, and for me, it was nice because the way they have the system set up in Finland is it's actually more of like a quarter system than a semester system. So I had one set of classes January and February and then another one 
March and April. So kind of gotten the swing of things in the first one and kind of have it figured out by the second one in terms of like how I need to study and review and um, the timing of like how to write papers and things like that. Awesome. Anybody else want to speak about the difference between classes, their home university and their host site? Yeah, um, I I kind of like touched on it, but same um, my classes, it is it's like a whole semester of the same classes. Um, and for most of them, there is like not really assignments or anything. And it is like one essay at the end that's going to be 100 percent of my grade or like one essay and one exam that each will be 50%. Um, and I haven't gotten to my exam period yet. So I can't like really tell how that's going to go yet. Um, but definitely like the first kind of before my spring break, um, I felt like I had a lot of free time. And I honestly like didn't know what to do with myself for some of it because I had like, I was like, oh, I feel like I should be doing more. Like, I feel like I should have schoolwork to do, but I just didn't. Um, and now like I'm starting to get all the assignments for my final essays and final projects and stuff um so it's definitely like starting to feel like I actually have stuff to do now um so definitely take advantage in the beginning when you have no assignments go explore go do things um but um I think it, it'll all work out um because also at my school um there's a whole like exam month at the end um so after classes start you have time when you don't even have classes and you can just study you can work on your essays and all of that stuff. So there's plenty of time for everything. Yeah, sort of building off what Eva said. Um, I don't regret this. I'll preface it by saying that, but I just booked trips to Spain this weekend and then Paris next weekend, which I'm so excited, but I also have like three papers and two presentations and then five exams all coming up and I'll get it done. <laughs> It'll be all right. But um definitely take advantage if your courses have syllabuses, syllabi, sorry, um, that you can look at. Um, so when you plan trips, you know, if you're really gonna want to buckle down come exam season, when you have all these assignments sort of flying at you all at once, then like Eva said, I would definitely plan your trips and other extracurriculars earlier and really take some time to make sure you stay on top of the coursework as well. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to um, ask this next one to Vanessa. Um, and then actually maybe we'll open it up to any, um, to Vanessa and Luciano, and then we'll, um, we'll see if anybody else from the U.S. has questions. But this student's asking about um, what are classes like? What should you expect from classes in the United States? Vanessa or Luciano, do you want to answer? Can you uh, say it again, please? I didn't. Sorry. Yeah. What are classes like in the United States? How do you experience classes as an international student in the United States? Mm. Well, uh, a different from my university uh, from Argentina, University of Palermo, which I know someone is interested in going. Uh, the classes there are three hours, credit hours, which means uh, it lasts three hours and you have a, a break from the, from the middle. But here you have many options, like one hour grade, which is only one hour. So it's different uh, like uh, times of of the classes and it's uh, also different, but it's good because you are not, yeah, I mean, all the time focusing in the class. Um, and also uh, my personal experience uh, I was struggling a bit in the beginning uh, uh, because of the English, but then I it was a big uh, a big uh, process. I mean, uh, I learned how to how to deal with that. So I now I speak much better and understand the classes. So it's everything. Everything is fine. Awesome, Vanessa. How have you experienced the classes in the US? Um, I'd say the classes um, are kind of similar to how we have them back at home. Like, um, so we have the same classes throughout the semester and they have, we have assessments throughout the semester as well, just in like little, um, what's this, um, little chunks. And um, 
one thing different is that they offer like um, extra credit opportunities here, whereas back at home we don't. So if you're if you're struggling and you're kind of falling behind in your grades, um, they offer extra credits here, and it's just a chance to like help you pull up your grades, and it's something that I've been taking advantage of. I mean, yes, taking advantage of, and um, also because my classes are mostly introductory; they're all first year um, classes. So um, they've been pretty, I mean, easy to understand and just like um, follow along with. And also there are a lot of like student services, like you can get um, a tutor if you want a one-on-one -on -one session with a tutor or there's also help sessions um, in, a, in a lecture hall. Like um, if you're struggling with something, you can walk in anytime and anybody will be there to help you with a certain um, like, uh, problem or question or something like that and then um so it's the same we have um a one hour lecture uh and then there's a one hour resuscitation or tutorial and then um labs or classes that um need to do practical work um the labs can be about three hours and maybe once a week and yeah so my classes are from monday to friday um, but uh, it's evenly spaced out. So the thing I like about Montana State University is that they're very flexible with like managing schedules and you can, they allow you to, um, what's this, to insert a break period, like whenever you want throughout the day and they will create a schedule, school uh, class schedule for you around that. And yeah. Um. Okay, our next question is, um, how difficult has it been, difficult or easy, to um, adjust yourself to language barriers if you're studying in a country that is not um, speaking your language, your first language? And what did you do to gain fluency faster? Um, I can start. So. Czech is notoriously, I have learned one of the hardest languages to learn. I had absolutely no background um, and they gave us a crash course on Czech. Um, I could say Dobry den, which is hello. I could say thank you and you're welcome, stuff like that. Um, but I don't speak Czech basically at all. I know the pleasantries um, and I was surprised how much I can get by um, just with English, um, which is an ideal. I would love to speak the local language. And if you do or you can learn um, power to you, I think it'll definitely enhance your experience. But if you're really nervous about that, um, if you're like me and you're going to a country where you don't know the language at all and it's hard to learn, um, then I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I think it is very doable to get by um, and you'll have other people friends will make who will be in the same boat as you. Um, so that's that's just my experience. Um, I'm not sure if some of my colleagues over here um, did learn their host language, but if you're worried about that, um, I made it work so far. Yeah, and also it's important to say that you are not alone. I mean, we you have also another people that are in the same situation of international studies. In my personal opinion, uh, experience they uh, also taught me how to speak fluently. And it's also really helpful to spend time in the activities that are not related to the classes. For example, I spend a lot of time in the cafeteria. Uh, and then that's really was really helpful because there were a, the international students there that we could speak English and spend the time uh, and to improve the, the language also. So that's also really helpful. Wow, that's a great suggestion. Um, OK, our next one. Um, somebody's asking for if any of you all have tips or ideas on where to get find cheaper flights. Um, I really like Student Universe. Um, that has pretty cheap flights. Um, you can usually compare them with like Expedia. Um, in between the two of those, you can usually get something cheaper. Um, if you're going to the U.S., uh, Spirit 
is like the discount airline that's cheaper. So kind of, it's not that much for you to get on the plane, but if you want to bring a bag or some other things, it's going to be a little bit more for that. Um, but also things like um, if you book and you don't pick your seat, that saves you some money. So like I have a trip coming up with my friends and we all kind of looked at each other and we were like, We'll see you on the other side, but we're not all paying the 10 extra euros to sit next to each other. Um, so that's definitely another way that you can kind of save money and also only bringing like a under seat bag. Um, but yeah, so in the US, Spirit Airlines and then Student Universe and also, oh, Skyscanner um, lets you see like all sorts of different flights um, through like, follow the different like airlines and which ones are the cheapest. Um, hey. Um, this one I'm going to open to everybody. What are some things you recommend packing the most or things that you wish you had packed but didn't pack? I mean, I'll start. Definitely the things that you should absolutely pack are if you have any medication that you need to bring. Um, make sure that you have that. Make sure it's considered legal in your host country. That's important to check. Um, if you have anything that's like very, um, it, like reminds you of home and it's going to make you feel comforted, I would pack that. If you have a food that you think might be really difficult to get in another country. Like if you're coming from the U.S. and going abroad and peanut butter is very important to you, you might consider packing a jar of peanut butter. What does everyone else think? Other ideas of things you would pack? I would say for me, I was, so I came to Finland, which is north in January, which is cold. And so when I was packing, I was thinking about cold weather, um, which it was right to think about cold weather, but also I didn't really bring stuff for like April, May, now that it's getting warmer. Um, so think about the weather when you're coming, but also think about what the weather will be like as you're leaving too. Um, and also yeah. with that, don't bring too much clothes because no matter where you go, there's going to be like thrift stores or stores or whatever, and you're going to end up getting a lot of things. So you're going to need space to bring those things back to. Um, I think for me, some of the things I use every day are like my water bottle that I can refill, um, like a tote bag or just like a day bag um, to carry all your stuff or like a backpack. Um, and I think something that I wish I had brought more of is socks. I The laundry is like kind of expensive here. So I try to go like as much as long as I can um, without doing washes. Um, and the first thing I run out of is socks. Um, and one thing I brought that I really don't use is I brought a big, like I brought my big camera with me. Because um, I was like, oh, like I'll be taking all these like amazing pictures and whatever. Um, but I genuinely have not touched it since I've been here. I have a little digital camera that I use and my phone. Um, and yeah, so it just took up a little more space um, and I have not used it once. Mm. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. Yeah, also, some things to take notes. Uh, I think the most helpful thing by far here was my computer because without it, I cannot uh, take notes in the class or anything like that. So if you have an iPad or something like that, it will be also really helpful for yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. Things that you need for class, like a computer or an iPad, definitely bring those things. Yeah, great. Um, did any of you open up a bank account in your host country? And if so, how difficult was that process? I will say if you need to open up a bank account in your host country, which some folks do based on their the way their stipend gets distributed, your host coordinator will help you with that process and they'll provide all the instructions for how to open up a bank account locally. Um, so I didn't open up a bank account, but cautionary tale, um, I had fraud on my card while I was here. And since my bank doesn't operate here, it was a pain um, mm -hmm. getting taken care of and replacing the card. Um, so if you could open a bank account, that might be nice. Also, just be careful with your card, using it at ATMs or things that might be untrustworthy because um, you don't want to get your information stolen like that. It's the same as anywhere, but um, it is more difficult when you're away from your local bank. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Let's switch. Yeah. Yeah. When I, so I'm sure you've seen this already, but like I had to call my bank um, or like put in the bank app that I was leaving the country um, so that if they saw a transaction somewhere, they knew kind of that it was me. Um, in addition to that, though, when I called them, they actually gave me like a toll free number that I could call if I needed to access the bank while I was abroad. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely find that and like have that saved just in case anything happens. Yeah, that's a really important note. Definitely call your bank in advance and tell them all of the countries that you'll be in. Because if not, if they start seeing, for example, charges in uh, Finland and they don't know that you're in Finland, they might start canceling your card. So definitely let your bank know in advance that you are going to be abroad. Um, okay, how hard or easy was it for you to make friends in your host institution? Did any of you join any clubs or talk? Can you talk to us a bit about how you've gone about making friends? I was actually uh, answering that question. Uh, as I said before, I, I was part of the international students. Uh, we, we took place in the first week of orientation process. So we have a lot of uh, activities together and we really get to know each other during that time. So we were all in the same uh, situation. So it was really easy for me uh, to get uh, new friends and, and everything. And they were also really open to meet you uh, as well. So that's really good. Um, yeah, um, yeah, for me, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should say no. Okay, uh, so uh, same thing for me. There's a, there's a large international um, like community here. And so making friends was easy. Um, and also uh, making friends with the domestic students was also easy, came naturally, especially with... Um, if your classes are small, it's just easier to make friends around. And um, you'd be surprised. People are um, are actually friendly and then they like want to reach out to you and like make plans and stuff. And anyways, that's just how it was for me. Um, I was just going to mention um, if you are going to a European university, um, there's an Erasmus Students Network at a lot of universities. Um, and it's kind of like, the European version of ISEP almost. Um, and there's like almost 800 students like in this like group chat, this like one huge group chat um, at my school here. Um, and they host events like multiple times a week, um, specifically for international students. Um, so it's super easy to like meet people through that. Um, so I definitely recommend um, seeing if that's an option at your school, um, but also just yeah, classes. Um, the classes here are like, kind of smaller. There's only maybe like 15 to 30 people in most of my classes here. So it's super easy to um, kind of make those kinds of connections and just talk to people. And um, like someone else said, like people are really friendly and they want to talk to you. They want to get to know you. So um, even if it's hard to like make the first move and like talk to someone, um, it's generally very well uh, received. Yeah, um, orientation for schools can be a great resource as well um, to meet people. Um, I got to Europe, Prague, and went straight to orientation um, with some friends I'd already made from my apartment. And we started um, making group meetings with random people that we met and getting group chats together and then ended up, you know, inviting each other to go out or have lunch or whatever. And just that's a cool way to meet people, sort of expand your network. And yeah, like everyone said, um, everyone's super friendly. I think a lot of people are in the same boat where they're going abroad, they're away from home, and they want to meet people and make new friends as much as we do. And I'm sure y'all all will. So um, it's been fun. Everyone's super nice. Awesome. All right. Our next question is about um, working while studying abroad. And before I throw it to y'all, I do want to emphasize that each country has specific regulations based on your visa. So it's really important if you're seeking to work part-time while you're on your study abroad, that you first contact your ISEP student services officer to understand the visa regulations. It's really important that you not violate the rules of your visa by working while you're studying abroad. 
So it may be legal, it may not be legal. It's gonna depend on the country or there may be a process that you need to engage in to make it legal. Um, so please, if you're interested in working while studying abroad, very important that you first check with your student services officer. So with that, are any of you working while you're studying abroad? And um, if so, can you tell us about that process? Nope. Okay. Um, I'm not working while I'm studying abroad, but my home university actually has a like work program um, like within our school. Um, and my on-campus job is working in the Global Engagement Office. So I work with international students um, in there. Um, so I can talk a little bit about that process from that end. Um, but for the most part, um, it's very much like the school will very much like help you um, find like all of the tax forms, all of the like legal forms you need to do. Um, the school will really help you with that. Um, and there will always be people to um, kind of guide you for those types yeah. of things. So if, if anybody's going to Warren Wilson, um, campus employment is a component of the placement at Warren Wilson. So they'll work with you to fill out all of the appropriate forms and make sure that everything is um, like legal and you've got all, all of the forms going so you can work on campus. Yeah. Okay, next question is for our folks in Europe. Um, what do you find is the best payment method for daily purchases? Do you tend to use card, cash? What do you tend to use in Europe for payment? Um, I used my credit card um, and I have one through First Financial Bank and it doesn't have like a conversion fee on it, um, which is nice because if I were to use my debit card, then it charges me for using euros. Um, so, yeah. I do use my debit card and there is a conversion rate and a mistake I made for about a month was um they give me the option to pay in check crowns or USD and I was choosing USD um, and that actually makes the conversion rate higher, I learned. And it's the same in any European country, I think, if you're doing those conversions, always pay with the local currency if they give you the option to choose and you'll actually have a lower conversion rate and fee if you pay with debit card. Um, cash is a great option too. If you hit ATMs and carry the local cash, then obviously no conversion there. Yeah, I use card or Apple Pay. Um, you can you can use cash, but it's honestly easier to not have to worry about it. Great. Um, have any of you traveled alone? And if so, can you talk about that experience? Or have you all found friends to travel with and make a group? How have you gone about traveling? Um, I've done some solo travel since I've been here. Um, I took a weekend trip to Porto, Portugal by myself. Um, and I went to Greece by myself for a little as well. And my biggest recommendation is staying in hostels. If you use the Hostel World app, um, when you like book the hostel, they'll put you in a group chat of all the other people staying um, in that hostel and like in the city that you're in. I um, mean, it's super, super easy to meet people um, if you want to. Um, but generally, I felt very safe, um, very comfortable. Um, if you're if you're confident and if you kind of like have a little bit of an idea of places you want to go, places you want to see um, and also with like hostels they'll have activities um sometimes there's like free tours of the city or something like that um but i haven't had any issues in any of my solo travels and i definitely recommend it it's a really really unique um experience yeah i would echo that a lot of hostels will plan activities for people staying there so it could be a cool way to like meet other people that are traveling there awesome okay um Next question for each of you or anybody who wants to take it. When you first arrived at your host site, how did you figure out how to get around the city that you're staying in? Or can you talk about the experience of learning how to travel around your host, your host site? 
Yeah. Um, so our orientation leaders were super helpful with that just at my university. Um, we had a whole day where they showed us how to use the tram system and the metro system. And it's really good in Prague. Um, I think all over Europe, public transportation is excellent. Um, in, a, in a lot of U.S. cities, in my experience, it's quite good um, as well. Um, so definitely ask, you know, people at your host institution. They'll be locals and know the area pretty well, and they'll be super friendly and happy to help you get the lay of the land. Yeah, my tutor helped me when they picked me up at the station. I was like, do I need to get some kind of app to get on the train on the bus now? She was like, yeah. So she told me what the local um, app is that you can like track the buses and look at the bus lines. Um, but also, honestly, Google Maps is really good um, about telling you which line you need to be on, where the stop is, where to get off. Um, the only issue I do have with it is sometimes when you need to like ride something and then get off and walk it's like, it gets a little bit lost. So I usually like get off and then kind of reset it, make it just show me where I'm walking to. Um, but in general, it's really great about that. And it can also, I think like track where the bus is, like if you're waiting for it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and also saving uh, locations that you go often. Uh, here in Emporia, it's really small, the city, so you don't have, uh, a lot of, of place to go. So bear that in mind if you came here. Uh, and also there is no public transport. <clears throat> uh, there is no train, there is no bus. So what really helped me was making friends who has cars. So that's really helpful. Uh, for instance, if you want to go to a, a supermarket, you have to go by, by car because you don't have another, another uh, public transport. And also it's a bit far from the campus. So. So yes, uh, and it's also really helpful uh, the orientation leaders because they also uh, take really care of me when I arrive here. Great. Okay, last question. How many suitcases did everyone take with them? Or how many suitcases would you recommend that people take with them? I know we already heard the advice that we recommend that at least one suitcase, not be completely full because you will buy things while abroad. Yeah, yeah. I bring, uh, I brought one big and one small plus a backpack. The backpack is really useful because uh, is you will need it during the day. So definitely it's really useful. So I would recommend bring that. But as you say, is uh, don't bring, I mean, you will end up buying a lot of things here so uh, don't take with you many things to to study abroad yeah i did the exact same i had one big one small and a backpack um i kind of gave up on trying to make it fit the weight and paid the weight <laughs> um like extra weight fee when i got to the airport so it will be a struggle getting home but yeah i feel like i got everything here that I needed, and I probably did overpack a little bit. <laughs> um, I also did one big, one small, one backpack. Um, but I also packed with me um, like a compactable duffel bag. So when I go back, I'll have an extra, an extra one as well. Smart. Um, cool. Okay. Well, we have only two minutes left, so I want to ask our final question: Is if we could have everybody answer, what has been your favorite part of your experience so far? Anybody can start. For me, it's been the fact that I feel like for the past two months, I've had more cultural immersion and experiences than I had in the first 23 years of my life combined. I mean, I had been to three countries in my life and now I've been to 13 which is nuts. And um, it's just been so cool. Um, I feel like I've really made the most of my time here and seen a bunch of just beautiful and incredible places, met a lot of cool and interesting, awesome people. Um, so definitely that, just branching out and seeing some really cool stuff. For me, it's the, the variety of and plenty of things that I uh, never experienced or learned in my university. 
I am definitely learning a lot of new things. So that's also really uh, helpful to consider when you travel abroad, but you will learn a lot of things you never expected to to learn. That's That's the big thing for me. Um, for me, kind of the like trip highlight for me was a trip to Lapland, which was a lot of fun. Um, we saw the Northern Lights and went on like a husky sleigh ride, and that was really, really cool. Um, but outside of that, getting like I knew I was going to get to learn Finnish culture um, being in Finland, but I didn't expect that I was going to learn so many other cultures at the same time from the other exchange students that are here. Um, so I've been getting to learn like how they celebrate holidays and eat dinner and things like that, that I wasn't expecting to do at all. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I think like everyone else, just immersing myself in the local culture. Um, in Malta, there's a lot of festivals. When I first arrived, there was like a carnival. So there was huge parades and floats and stuff. A couple of weeks ago, there was a strawberry festival. Now there's like a firework festival. Um, so it's been really neat to just see um, all of those different things. That's great. Yeah, you you definitely uh, while studying abroad grow a lot of uh, as a person. I mean, you have to solve a lot of problems and and just your own. So it really important. It's really uh, valuable uh, this experience for you. Vanessa, what about you? Um, I'd say the same thing, um, the cultural immersion part, I mean, coming from totally different um, pl uh, cultural place, it's, it's nice to learn about new culture and um, also what helps make um, like a, your time abroad memorable is if you have um, a good community and support and friends to help make those memories with you memorable, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to just wrap it up really quickly. Yes. Um, All righty. So as we all talked about and our panelists gave really good insight and as Rachel and I explained the application, I mean, excuse me, the acceptance packages. Um, if you do have any questions, whether it be about the acceptance package or any questions about your program, please contact um, us, the student services, me and the other um, lovely members of my team will be happy to um, answer any questions that you may have. And then finally, as um, Jackie um, Langdon mentioned in the very beginning, um, please connect with us. We are on Instagram and TikTok. Just follow at um, ISIP Study Abroad. If you wanna share your content with us, I think that would be so great. If not, it's totally your decision. Um, but please note that we do have um, connect forms, which will allow you to interact with those that are going to your same host university. For, um, for any summer programs, those connect forms will be available um, at the end of April through email. Um, your student services officer will email you that. For those that are going on fall and full year programs, your connect forms will be available mid-May. Again, those will be um, sent to you through email by your student services officer. So just look out for them. And thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone, for attending. And a huge thank you to our panelists um, for sharing your fantastic advice. We really appreciate you all being here. Thank you, everybody.